FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Welcome again to Faux Monday, the snackable companion to FOMO Sapiens. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. And of course, it's best day of the week, Faux Monday. Happy Faux Monday. Now, on Thursday, we're going to be having an interview with Lisa Skeet Tatum. She's the founder of Landed, a personalized career pathing platform, which helps everyone to better manage their careers, but especially women in diverse groups in the workplace. But before we go there, I have some very, very special guests here who is going to tell us about how careers actually work. And she does this for a living and knows a lot about it from her own personal experience. She is Andrea Koppel, an award-winning former CNN correspondent who is currently an ed tech startup entrepreneur, career coach, and founder and CEO of the College to Career Academy, which helps confused college students find careers they'll love. Now, in 2021, Andrea was named a top job search expert to follow on LinkedIn, and she also hosts the Apple Top 100 podcast, Time for Coffee. That's time, the number four, and coffee, and I am on that show. We did the interview recently, And so you got to go check that out. It's a really awesome show. Now, first of all, I just want to welcome you to the show, Andrea. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me, Patrick. I'm excited. Well, you have a more than excited. You have something to tell us, which is that when we did the interview, you said, listen, I was listening to your show last week and you had a guest, Mark Hirschberg. Hi, Mark. And he talked about this notion of really plotting out your career, making a map for the next, you know, many, many years. And you disagree with Mark. And, you know, I love that. Like, we want a little controversy. You know, this show's not that controversial, but we're going to make it controversial today. So tell us, tell us why you differ. Well, let me preface my remarks by saying okay. Mark is immensely smarter than I am. The man has three degrees from MIT. So this is not to question his intelligence at all. But what I want to say is I was preparing to interview you and I was binging on Fo Mondays and FOMO Sapiens. And I heard Mark recommend students to plan the next 10, 20, 30 years of their life, like a business plan. And What I want to say very respectfully to Mark is that we are not living in a temperature controlled scientific laboratory in MIT. Just look what's happened in the last couple of years, folks. We had a global pandemic. So instead of thinking about a plan, I am going to recommend our listeners act like a mad scientist in a crazy laboratory, not MIT, but some like sketchy place in some guy's basement where they've got the beaker and the test tubes and they're putting all kinds of chemicals in there. And sometimes guess what? It blows up in their face. They had a micromanaging boss or they were in a toxic work environment. Because when you act like a mad scientist, you're experimenting, you're testing, you're iterating. And that is exactly what you need to find your passion, to find your purpose. You need to try different jobs in different industries, not plan because things happen. You cannot predict where our world is going to be tomorrow, let alone five years from now. So act like a mad scientist and you will uncover your joy. FOMO. FOMO. You know, as somebody whose career massively blew up and I, I, I get you, I mean, I, I never had a plan to begin with, so, you know, that's just me. But I will say that 
What's cool about that idea of the mad scientist as you're talking, I'm thinking to myself, you know what mad scientists don't have? They don't have fear. They don't sit around saying, oh my goodness, what if I combine, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna make it sound like I know about science, I don't. It's like the, the helium glycinate with the um, iridium. <laughs> <laughs> Probably that would be bad, but they take calculated risks. They learn and then they discover new things and move forward. So I get that. Now you work with young people all the time. I mean, it's interesting. You talk to a young person who's trying to figure out their life. You hear a lot of like apprehension and I'm sure you're dealing with people, you know, the world has changed. It's like, okay, last week I wanted to be a consultant. Next week I want to make NFTs or whatever. How do you how do you, what is the, I guess, the pathway, you know, of a career these days? Like, what is the trajectory? So let me answer it like this. Higher ed does a really solid job of teaching students subject matter expertise. But what happens? Students self-identify by their major. They put themselves into a silo. And the students that I work with are confused. They're anxious, they're afraid, they're stuck because more often than not, if they were humanities major, they're like, I majored in history. I majored in English literature. I majored, I majored in French, but I don't wanna be a, and more often than not, it's a teacher. I don't want to go into higher ed or into elementary school. What do I do? So what I teach them is how to break down the walls of the tiny house that they think is their major and show them that what they've been learning inside and outside the classroom are a whole bunch of technical and interpersonal skills that form the foundation of a professional skyscraper that they're going to be building over the course of their lives with each new job and each new career, adding a new floor in that skyscraper. So what we do is we unpack, we take inventory of those hard skills, those technical skills, and the soft skills, those interpersonal skills. And I show them how they align with different job functions. That makes a lot of sense. And I think the, the notion of, I think so many people get caught up on the idea of they're an industry expert versus that they have a transferable set of skills that they can put across industries. And let me tell you something. If I had decided to be an industry expert, I would have no, I'd be so unemployed right now because I, I have certain skills and I've learned how to apply them across different industries because you don't know like industries change like what where the opportunities are change so radically. Now you mentioned this idea of the skyscraper, so I I'm I like that notion right. So I'm thinking about the skyscraper, but I'm thinking for those of us who are more advanced in our careers and aren't just starting out. We have a lot of that skyscraper built. And you know what happens if you have a skyscraper and there's a ba bad weather of it? You might fall out of the skyscraper. And so I think a lot of people, when we talk about fear, it's like fear of being fired. How do we deal with that? Because that's scary, right? Totally. Well, there I was, worked at CNN. I had 20 years of journalism experience and the mm. last 14 of them had been at CNN. And there was a new president who came in and I wasn't his cup of coffee. You mentioned time for coffee or <laughs> cup of tea. And he didn't renew my contract, he fired me. And there I was, I was in my early 40s. And I was devastated, Patrick. It was humiliating, it was leaked to the media, it was a gut punch. And then, I started meeting people for coffee and for breakfast and asking them, well, gee, what do you do in your job? And how do you think I might apply my 20 years of journalism experience in this industry or that industry? And I got a job, actually, inter I didn't even interview for it. I was talking with one of these people about an industry that I didn't even know existed. And that was 
PR for the nonprofit world and foundations. Mm. And the president of the company was talking to me and he was like, you know what, Andrea? We have somebody who's senior vice president of communications right now, but she's not really working out. I think you'd be great for the job. So I ended up starting with this company. I then pivoted into the nonprofit world itself, working for the American Red Cross. That was too bureaucratic for me. I then pivoted into working in policy and advocacy for a global humanitarian and development organization and did that for six years. And then my life took a front seat and I decided I wanted to quit that role to be a full-time stay-at-home mom. And what I want to say, Patrick, is that every single industry I had worked into, including the one I'm in right now as an edtech entrepreneur, I had never studied in school. I was a poli-sci major with a concentration in Asian studies and Chinese. I never studied any of these industries. And because the world threw me some curveballs. What I like to say is it's a magical world. Sometimes it's black magic. You get fired or there's a pandemic. And sometimes it's pixie dust that happens. And you meet people who open a door for you, who tell you about a type of job that you had never heard of before. And this is how our lives unfold. And if you lean into that fear that we all have, that we all experience when we're doing something new, if you lean into it and play to your strengths, you will continue to have an exhilarating professional journey. And I want to go back to when I was fired because I had actually been unhappy at CNN for three years prior to getting fired, Patrick. But I had been afraid to quit because I had only ever been a journalist and I didn't think there was anything else I could do but to be a journalist. So when I was fired, it actually turned out to be an incredible gift because it forced me to lean into that fear, to follow my fear, and to push through it. And that is where all of the excitement in my life has continued to happen. One industry, one job after another. As I like to say, Fear-based decision-making leads to suboptimal outcomes and incomes. Everybody, go check out Andrea. You can find her on LinkedIn, Andrea Koppel, K-O-P-P-E-L. And check out her podcast, Time for Coffee. That's time with the number four coffee. All right, Andrea Koppel, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Patrick. It was great. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.